Good afternoon. In this video is going to deal with the third part of the Three Wolves, and um, this is about an hour and a half in. And uh, Max Bow has done a good video on this this section here, so I don't know how much time we're going to spend on it. Again, they go to a young man, you know, that uh, they start dealing with this young guy as uh, if somehow you know he's really the issue. So uh, this is about fifty nine minutes in. No, that's not what I want to do. Use app. I want to use app. Okay. Blunt and brutal with this. Okay. All right. This is that other guy, right? The uh... yeah, the other kid. Okay. Please. Is this the one that they spent an hour on high end of them? And now they're dealing with this kid. So an hour and a half, basically. They're going with two very small YouTube channels and young young uh, people. Not the guys who are major critics. Not the major not the major critics of Brian Dengler. Uh, you said you got an email for and they wanted you to do a video on it? No, that was another one. Okay. There's some... You can go ahead. None of his followers, by the way, leave comments on my video. Anyway, he, he doesn't like that. I'm sure they don't do it for Max either. See, he doesn't want his he doesn't want his followers talking directly to me or Max. That's his he wants they'll go to him because that's how cult members operate. They don't want you interacting with someone who's against him. So uh, that's that's how they do it. Uh, his all his do all these guys who come along is or or they complain about me uh, being obsessive. They never deal with the actual subject of the video. They'll just say, oh, you're obsessive with Brian Dengler. That's all, that's all they can say. But they'll never actually raise a question and deal with the actual issue. And that's because uh, he has indoctrinated his followers not to actually interact with his critics because he's afraid of losing him, losing his followers. All right. <clears throat> no one in the Bible has ever been saved by faith alone. Hello, everyone. This is John from the Kraken Clan. And I want to do this video talking about a false prophet out there named Brian Denlinger. Uh, this guy is a dangerous false prophet, and um, the reason why I say that is because he basically uh, teaches lordship salvation at different <laughs> forms. He claims that he does. He does teach lordship salvation. Do that. I've heard him claim that he does. Uh, <clears throat> teaches lordship salvation at a different form. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. So you know. <laughs> Go ahead. He teaches worship salvation. So, I don't know what he's laughing about, but he does teach worship salvation. And he doesn't, worship salvation doesn't make the claim, as he does, that uh, you have to be sinless before God will give you repentance. They never say that. He claims they say that, but they don't say that. Teach worship salvation, but what he does is that. He basically says that if there's no changed life in a Christian, then they are never saved to begin with. Well, this is simply not true because uh, the Corinthian church in the, in the Bible was the most worldly church ever, and the, the most worldly church and the most sinful church in the New Testament. And the apostles still called them brethren 19, over 19 times. I think it was over 19 times. But anyway, they're the most worldly, sinful church ever, but they're still called brethren. Uh, many good men of God in the Bible, for example, Lot, he committed all kinds of sins after he got saved, but the Bible... Okay, you know what, I can't... Anyway, go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, after Lot got saved, uh, when did Lot get saved? I didn't know that. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian, uh, Max Bow did a video on this because he's claiming now Lot wasn't saved. Second Peter says it's very clear he was saved. Second Peter makes it very clear Lot was a saved man. See, originally what Brian would do was he would say these are exceptions that prove the rule. Now he's denying that Lot was actually saved. Uh, Second Peter uh, 2. Let's see. Uh, Verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example and sample unto those that after, uh, that after should live ungodly. And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. 2 Peter 2.7. He's laughing here. 
The Father says, Amen. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to, the be, to be punished. Well, I was a saved man. And Walkman uses him, and Hoffman uses him an example of, as a cardinal Christian who loses everything but still gets to heaven. They all believe in the one gospel, Brian. You know, the gospel is one revelation, same one. See, that's another big problem to the faith works people. See, Lordship Salvation is really a faith works system. So a lot is a problem to guys like also like Robert Blaken. A lot didn't produce any works. So it's also a problem to and see and Muckman doesn't address that in his uh in, in North Hoffman, who are both faith works guys. A lot is a problem to the faith works people who said they had to produce faith and works in the Old Testament uh, in order to be saved. A lot didn't produce any works. <laughs> yeah. He was looking forward to the cross. <laughs> and I know Lot was a saved man, like Abraham was. Both saved men. Second Peter uh, uh, two seven tells us that. It's a little sodomite flag back here in the background. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was thinking but, that. Um, yeah, I wonder what that was. You know, no one ever said that you can. No one's ever said that you had to be sinless, like perfect. I love that. You know, and lot. No one's saying it's about lot sin, sinless perfection. Lot didn't produce any fruit. That would show he was a believer. See how they try to shift it? Oh, and this is not an issue of being sinlessly perfect. This is an issue of a guy who didn't produce any fruit. Where his own son-in-laws laughed at him. When he said, they said, we need to get out of Sodom. Well, that's what we need to get out of Sodom. His son-in-laws were laughing at him. Because he lost his testimony. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the liars out there. But all right. You get the liars. So what is it? See, one guy is saying he wasn't sinlessly perfect. Brian is giving the, impl impl the impl implication there that he wasn't saved. I said Max Ballard did a video on this. I, mean, it, I do. They're full of devils. I mean, that's just what it is. They hate you. They hate us all. Oh, they hate anybody that stands for right righteousness. Yeah. So they can't answer. They can't answer that. Lot was a saved man who lived lived like an unsaved man. Now the inside with him was vexed. But from what his deeds were, you would never know he had food because he stayed in Sodom. And he tried to change Sodom and they laughed at him. And the whole idea is he should have separated from Sodom. And it took uh, the prayers of Abraham to get him out of Sodom. So God saved him out of there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right, Paul says he was still saved. Um, King David, uh, I, I believe he committed a lot of sins, but he was still saved. So uh, I, I believe he committed a lot of sins. You don't even know your Bible. Do you know what happened uh, with King David? I mean, he would tell us. <laughs> he committed a lot of sins. What are you laughing at? I mean, they don't even answer this question. Committed adultery, murder. Yeah, okay. So that's his point, isn't it? Sins that could not be atoned for with sacrifice. There was no sacrifice for murder. What did God do to him, though, buddy? Why don't you talk about that? Yeah. Well, he punished him. But at that year when he was doing that, you couldn't, you, David didn't show a changed life. He looked like an unbeliever. Committing uh, adultery and then killing a the man, killing the man, the, the, the wife's husband. You know, killed his child for seven days. Mm -hmm. What? Killed his child for seven days? I mean, pray for his child. The Lord killed the child. What's he talking about? They're laughing at this guy. He told me killed his child. What? Let me go back here. It's out there. But all right. I'm, it, I do. They're full of devils. I mean, that's just what it is. They hate you. They hate us all. They we hate lies. Anybody that stands for right righteousness, you know. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a changed life. Let's worship salvation. Let's worship salvation to say 
If you're saved, you live a changed life. Lot did not live a changed life. That was the point. All right, let's continue. He says he was still saved. Um, King David, uh, I, I, I believe he committed a lot of sins, but he was still saved. So uh, I, I, I believe he committed a lot of sins. You don't even know your Bible. Do you know what happened uh, with King David? I mean, committed adultery, murder. What did God do to him, though, buddy? Why don't you talk about that? Yeah. You know, killed his child for seven days. Okay, so he said God killed his child for seven days. No, God didn't kill his child for seven days. God killed his child. But David prayed for the child for seven days. At the end of seven days, God, God killed the child. Mm -hmm. And he had fourfold discipline with his family. Never, the sword never left his family. The rebellion of Absalom, the rape of his uh, daughter Diana, uh, Dan. Uh, so he had a lot of things going on uh, with uh, uh, David after that. And always of David, of course, he 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 had reached his peak and he reached the height. And he got lazy. He was about 50 years old. And uh, that's what got him. Instead of being out there with his troops, he was uh, back at the palace where he shouldn't have been. And that's what got him in trouble. That's what began the long cycle of problems. The whole idea that if you sin or, or, or change life as proof of salvation is false because... Most of the good men of God in the Bible committed tons of horrific sins after they got saved, and the Bible says they're still saved. Like I heard some some guy, like you know, these people out there who add this repenting of sin to the gospel, and, and, and of course, repentance is part of the gospel, but it's not part of salvation. The what, salvation. what? 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 Excuse me. <laughs> 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 but it's not part of salvation. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. Bunch of jackals. Oh boy. <laughs> now remember, these are people who make YouTube videos. So you know when you're making a YouTube video, you mess up. And it is mocking this kid because he he, he said something and he, he misstated. He misstated what he did. Repentance is, is, is uh, uh, repentance of sins is not part of the gospel. Repentance is part of the gospel. Repentance of unbelief, not repentance of sins. I think that's what he meant to say. See, there's always repentance built into faith because you have to change your mind. You change from unbelief to belief. But repentance of sins starts after you get saved. Oh man, believe, you can hear the gospel and believe the gospel, but you're not really saved then, apparently. <laughs> this is good entertainment. <laughs> this kid doesn't even know the Bible at all, man. He's just like stumbling all. He's. I think this guy's worse than the other guy we just watched. No yeah. Doubt. Yeah. This is for entertainment. There's a real nice little surprise at the end too, because like, I saw this already. But go ahead. <laughs> Basically, here's how it works. When the Philippian jailer came up to the apostles and asked them, what must I do to be saved? They just told him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <laughs> they didn't tell him to repent of all his sins. or They didn't, they didn't tell him to live a change. So that's what he's saying. He's saying uh, basically that uh, it's just faith alone. And you're not told to repent of your sins. When Brian begins his uh, first video dealing with salvation, he starts what well, Acts sixteen thirty says. What must what, what what must I do to be saved? It doesn't say anything about repentance of sins in sixteen thirty one. Acts sixteen thirty one. Doesn't say one word about repentance of sins. Life. They just told them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You see, salvation is by faith alone. Oh. <laughs> I know. I was getting ready to stop it. <laughs> yeah. A uh, classic thing that these people always go to Acts sixteen thirty one. Acts sixteen thirty one. The credit. That's what he starts his uh, salvation message with. So it's what must I do to be saved? Acts 16.30. And what's the answer? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved in my family. In the house, excuse me. Um, okay. He was going to kill himself. Yep. 
Yeah. How about that whole thing? The guy was going to kill himself. Yeah. He reached, yeah. He reached a point where he won sal he saw salvation. He won salvation. So what happened with it? Doesn't say one way, right? Paul, the question is, there's one time, one time the question come up, what must I do to be saved? What must a person do to be saved? And the, and the answer Paul gives isn't repent of sins. Isn't calling upon the name of the Lord. It's belief. Paul says, do thyself no harm. You know, don't kill yourself. And the guy comes in trembling and falls <clears throat> down in front of them and says, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does Paul say? I don't need to preach repentance to him. Okay, there's no need for that. He's in a repentant, broken state. Yeah. You know? And you say, well, there's no change. He didn't, he didn't say repent of your sins. He was ready to be saved. But that's not, that, that's not the issue. He didn't say repent of your sins. That's supposed to be part of his gospel. Brian's gospel. Call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Paul didn't say, call upon the name of the Lord, and I shall be saved. Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved. The, 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 the way that we, the, uh, uh, the jail came is not, is not relevant to the fact of what Paul told him to do. He's saying now there's no need for it to say repent of your sins or anything else because you already reached that repentance uh, in that state. So that can't be part of the gospel then. That can't be part of the gospel because basically... If you reach the state of, of being totally convicted of sin, then repentance of sins is not an issue. Then the only issue is faith. It's like, uh, it could have cost the guy his life. Another one of the guys in, in the book of Acts, I forget the exact passage, but you you know, there's the, the story of one of the, the prison keepers. Change life is living for change life, not the fact that it could have cost the person on their life. Change life is saying you'll show your salvation by your fruit after you get saved. The keepers were put to death because you know the disciples were out of prison and you know, they got out of prison. You know, it was it was something you if you're the keeper of the prison and the, some of the prisoners escape, you know, you're gonna get killed for that. Of course, it was a new life for the guy. I mean, give me a break. You know, in Acts 12, he guys talking about the other guy, he's laughing at this other guy laughing, not knowing the Bible, Joe me. It's Acts chapter 12. When Peter gets out, Howard puts those guys to, uh, to death, the jail keepers. Well, the guys were watching them. They all die. What's that have to do with the changed life? With the jailer? Nothing. Great. So, I'm actually going to read the passage here just for, so everybody can hear it. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But yeah, that's what happened. If you also I remember when Paul was the uh, in the shipwreck, the ship, and he was and the ship uh, was going about to go down, and the prisoners were about to uh, swim out out there, and the uh, the Roman Roman guards wanted to kill the prisoners. They were responsible for those prisoners, and Paul said, "No, don't worry about it. They'll all they'll all survive." So the in 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 uh, uh, in uh, showing favor to Paul, the Santorian allowed the prisoners to swim to safety. <clears throat> that and we're not killed. Doesn't do a change life. Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, "Do thyself no harm, for we are all here." Then he cried. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. He came trembling. And brought them out and said, "Sirs, what, what?" Yeah, because he been, just been through an earthquake. <laughs> he just been through an earthquake, and he's about to kill himself. So he was trembling. He was scared. I said, "Do to be saved." And they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." And I see, that's why he hates his verse. Romans ten thirteen isn't in there. Repent of your sins isn't in there. So he's going to try to make all this stuff up. Oh, he came already, but he broke, and all that, all this stuff. We know you have to be on the conviction. We don't deny that. Free grace people do not deny you have to be under conviction. You have to know you need a savior before you, you believe in that savior. But what's not part of salvation is repenting of your sins or calling upon the name of the Lord. That's what he wants to make salvation part of, the part of salvation. House. He came trembling. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you've been through an earthquake, you've trembled. He's just about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. So he was trembling. He came that close to death. Very close to death. 
Yeah, do it a sins. Let's do it a sins. What is the state you've always seen? He saw Paul and, and Silas, how they handled everything. And that's when he went to Paul and said, what must I do to have, to be saved, to have what Paul had? Somebody come to the Lord in. It's always either a trembling or, you know, a shamed state. Yeah. Doesn't say repentance of sins. Doesn't say anything about calling upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. And one question was someone asked what they must do to be saved, and those things don't pop up. One thing pops up, faith. You must believe. I don't understand why that's so hard for people to get. I don't understand why. Because you, you, what it's in there is not repentance. Repentance isn't mentioned, and call upon the name isn't mentioned. That's why. Faith alone is mentioned. It bothers them so much to come to the Lord ashamed and realize. Uh, that's not the issue. We don't question conviction. The issue is now what must it do to be saved? We never doubt conviction. Is it your, it's your wronged God. We, you have to understand you're a sinner, dead in your sins. The issue is death. You're spiritually dead and you need, you need spiritual life. You're going to hell a spiritually dead. You're in the line of Adam. You need to get out of, out of the line of Adam into the line of Christ. That's the issue of salvation. In your life. Yep. You know, just, I don't know. Nothing minus nothing. That's, a, that's salvation. The book of John. The book of John is describing how to get saved. The Bible makes that clear. The book of John is how to get saved. And that book, guess how many times it uses the word repentance? Zero times. So repentance is part of the gospel. Not not saying we're not trying to take repentance out of the gospel, but it's not part of. He's got two two subscribers. And they're spending time in his video. Salvation. That's all. <laughs> 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 Not for our salvation. Oh my word! Go, wow. We go back here yeah. because you know the disciples were out of prison. You know they got out of prison. You know it was it was something you if you're the keeper of the prison and the, some of the prisoners escape, you know you're gonna get killed for that. Of course it was mm -hmm. easy life for the guy. I mean, give me a break. Uh, I'm actually gonna read the passage here just for so everybody can hear it, and that works. Yeah. Brian Denlinger, he teaches that you have to repent of your sins to be saved, uh, turn from your sins, um, and it's basically lordship salvation. Like I've heard him say that, oh, you can't be a Christian and live like a devil. I thought that was his wording. And you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. That's what that's the whole idea. The, the idea of sin unto death. You, you know, God kills you, but you can live like a devil. You, you go back to the flesh. Uh, that's what the Corinthians were living like. See, they don't ignore that. The Corinthians were living like devils. They were doing what they wanted to do. Yeah, and yeah. so because this easy believers would think. You get right down to it. They got all kinds of works. They got all kinds of things that you have to do, you can't do, and you can't you can't say and whatever else, you know. Not faith alone. Oh, you can't say. Yeah, if you had works to faith alone, you're lost. So yeah, if uh, if you if if you uh, believe you believe in ten thirteen is part of the gospel, if you believe in that the uh, you have to repent of your sins is part of the gospel, yeah, you're lost. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, it's funny if somebody said, uh, I had this, I had somebody say this to me one time, you know, he's like, you know, you're, you're not saved because you preach repentance. And I was like, okay, what do I need to be, need to do to be saved? Stop preaching repentance. That's what you told me. Yeah, because you hadn't worked to it. You had a condition. Anything you add is a condition to faith alone. You've added a work. Yeah. Don't add works to faith. It's faith alone. And that works. Yeah. Is that works? No, you're preaching works because you add repentance of sins as part of salvation. Well, yeah. well, according to his logic, that would mean that Lot, King David, and King Saul were all unsaved because they were saved and they were living like devils after they got saved. Well, they were living fine, but then after a while they began living like devils. According to Brian's logic, they were never saved to begin with. But according to the Bible, they were still saved. So it's a, 
It's not true. So I was going to try my discipline. Yeah, King Saul is a good one against the uh, faith works people. Faith works people say King Saul went to hell or torments, which he did. He went to Abraham's bosom because he was with Samuel. Samuel said to me, today you, you and your sons will be with me today. And Samuel had come up from Abraham's bosom. So don't let the faith works people tell you that, oh, you have to do works in order to stay saved. Saul didn't do any works. <laughs> you know, he, had, he was demon-possessed at the end, you know, basically at the end, but uh, all kinds of demon activity. But he's still saved. And um, turn my Discord off. What? What? What do you think? I don't know. Hmm. Hope he's not talking about that wicked website. Hmm. No, he wouldn't be. No, because you know. Well, maybe he is because you don't have to have a changed life frame. You can live like a devil if you're saved. Yeah. If you now remember, Brian Dangler said he has a friend. Involved in all, you know, adultery and all kinds of things, and basically he says he's still saved. So when he gets up there, he says, "Oh, you can't live like that." He has a guy. He has. He says, "Oh no, I'm, 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 I'm involved with people who are involved in all kinds of stuff, and and uh, and you know, trying to uh, uh, work with them. And I know they're saved, but they're still involved in all kinds of sin. He was involved in pornography. How many years? That's living like a devil. It's living like a devil." If you don't know what Discord is, it's basically like this, um, uh, like a gamer, video gamer, informer website or whatever. There's all kinds of profanity and disgusting images on there and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, J JT just said in the comments that uh, Discord is a gaming server. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's also a website, too. I know about the website. So it's all kinds of profanity and the images and stuff on there. Right. I got to say something else here before you go back to the video. I never, as a teenager, would have thought about talking this way about a preacher. You know? Well, you're not a preacher. <laughs> Who are you? This guy. He thinks it's somebody. He thinks it's somebody. You come up on making YouTube videos and you say, I would never think about talking about a preacher like that. He, everything he, Every point he's made has been absolutely correct. The examples they have been I mean, like David, but the fact is Saul and Lot were two examples of saved men who who live like the devil. I mean, it just it's it's weird that they come out. He has such authority that he can put down a guy that's forty three years old. Yeah, because you're wrong. Look at the arrogance. And so what? You're forty three years old. You've regressed. You haven't progressed. You're worse now at 43 than you were 33. Yeah. It's just, it's weird. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm infallible or anything by any means. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're the opposite of infallible. You know, of course not. I take correction from all different types of people. You don't take any correction, you liar. You correct nothing. But just to come out and, oh, you're going to condemn this guy and or he's such a false prophet. Is it? He is. Huh? You can't, you can't refute what he's saying. So now he's just upset because this guy, young kid, came out and 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 you know basically said uh, some truths about him. He didn't say anything, and he wasn't even mean about it. He didn't say anything out of humming him about Brian Dan. He just dealt with his doctrines, unlike these other idiots and they're laughing and giggling like uh, schoolgirls. You know, good night, kid. Yeah, and then he tries to quote, you know, and he tries to quote David, and he doesn't even know the scripture. Yeah, you know. he didn't try to quote David. He just mentioned David. He didn't try to quote him. You guys understand the English language? He didn't try to quote David. He gave David as an illustration. Yeah, really. You know, it's like it's it's the same thing with you know this this Alvarez kid. You know, last week he tried to come on my channel and say debate me, debate me. You know, and now he's an easy believers. I'm Trinitarian, so. Well, thank God I went to this Trinitarian. <laughs> easy beliefs. You know what easy believers in the quantum magatha is human using free will. That you have human free will. Reformed people believe that God has to give you give you the uh, the faith. What the worship salvationists say is easy believism is the fact that man makes his own decision, makes his decision in response in response 
to the truths of the gospel. He responds positively or negatively to the, uh, the truth of the gospel. That's what they call easy believers. Oh. You know, he thinks he's like some sort of uh, authority or something like that. He's got no authority at all. Neither do you guys. <laughs> you guys have no authority. But just like with him, they're probably about the same age, I would guess. I don't know, 19, 20 years old. That's what he looks like here. But, yeah, it, it's just funny. These really young kids are just raising up now, and they just think they have authority now. You know? yeah, he says authority. He says that uh, Brian Denton was wrong. The kid wasn't claiming any authority, except the Bible. He was claiming the authority of the Bible. He's saying the Bible did not teach what Brian Denton was saying. So the Bible has the authority. Kid isn't claiming any authority, young man. Oh. And then when you try to correct them, they just get all mad and they blow up. Yeah, you could try to change the Bible. Yep. Yep. All right, let's continue. Let's, let's continue on with, uh, going through a video. Keep, keep it, it has two subscribers to it. <laughs> uh, the reason why this doctrine is so dangerous is because I, I, I believe, I, pre I heard Brian down there even say that or I don't know if it's him saying it. I, I think I'm confusing him with somebody else. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't even know who he's talking about now. Yeah, get your facts straight. <laughs> Maybe about Discord. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually, no, no. Actually, never mind. This wasn't Brian Dillinger. I, I was confusing him with somebody else. Um, but... Uh, uh, Dan Linger, he teaches that once you're saved, you're always saved, which is biblical. I believe that once saved, always saved. I believe that once you get saved, you can never lose your salvation. And he believes that too, which is why he teaches that if you sin after you get saved or live a sinful life, you're never saved to begin with. Because you have some other false teachers who will say that if you sin, you'll lose your salvation, like Jesse Moro, or this ministry called a True Church. Like, I'm not sure if you heard, but so there's this guy called Darwin Fish who started a ministry called A True Church, and they teach that if you commit suicide, you go to hell. They teach you to lose your salvation, which is, of course, false, and they teach works-based salvation. Um, and, and Brian Denlinger and Jesse Morrill, he teaches also works-based salvation, that you can lose your salvation. Denlinger, he doesn't teach you to lose your salvation, uh, but he just teaches a different a different form of lordship salvation. <laughs> Uh, first of all, you don't even know anything about Jesse Morrell. He doesn't even teach Lordship Salvation, so maybe you should... Can you say he does? He was saying Jesse Morrell says you lose, lose your salvation. This guy can't listen. He isn't saying Jesse Morrell is teaching Lordship Salvation. He was saying Jesse Morrell is teaching you can lose your salvation. And that Brian Daniel is teaching a different form of Lordship Salvation. To get your facts right. Jesse Morrell teaches moral government theology, which is... Come, which is uh, it came, it came from, it originated from Charles G. Finney in the 1800s. And basically, God is not, uh, God does not know the future. Your past sin, or not, the, the sins of the, uh, the fall of Adam did not affect you. It taints you at all. Uh, we're not under a curse of any kind. Your flesh is okay. There's nothing wrong with your flesh. It's just your free will causes you to sin, you know, not your sinful flesh. But, um, well, the Methodist, in a sense, this is, that's the Armenians. So you can go back to Finley, but you can go back to issues of Armenian theology teaches the idea of free will, and that's that, that's the issue. The, the the flesh doesn't cause you to sin. The flesh is the source of temptation. Nothing causes you to sin, people. You give it because you positionally you sin, your flesh is dead. That's what Romans six is talking about. You don't have to, never have to sin. It doesn't cause you to sin. You give into it. If free will gives in to the sin. You 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 yield to the flesh. Nothing causes you. It's a temptation. It tempts you to sin. But you never have to give in to sin. Positionally, you're dead to sin. And he also teaches that you have to become an imitation of Jesus Christ. Okay. That's imitation. It's more of sin is perfection. That's what the Armenians are teaching. That's why they say you can lose your salvation. You don't know, each other sin is perfection. They put a little spin on this. They deal with noble sins versus all noble sins. Sins of ignorance versus sins of presumption. Government theology, that's what it is. It's not even the same thing. He didn't, no. he didn't say it was the same thing. He was saying that 
Brian is correctly teaching eternal security, and these other people aren't teaching eternal security, but Brian is teaching a different form of Lordship and salvation. Um, so I want to clarify that real quick. But well, to clarify all you showed is that you didn't want to listen to the kid, what the guy, young man was saying. But yeah, it's another form of Lordship salvation. No, Brian, he said what Brian is teaching is another form of Lordship salvation. What Brian says is that there are certain things Christians, Christians won't do. So he knows that they were never Christian in the first place. That's how he gets around eternal security. He says there are certain things Christians will never do. One of them is interracial marriage. He says be for integration. So he's had a whole list. I put a video up in the nine things where he says a Christian will never do. And therefore, if Christian, if someone is doing them, they can't really be a Christian. That's how he gets around eternal security. Um no. But anyway, yeah. Because, like, once again, he teaches that if there's, if there's no changed life, or if you go back to living a sinful life, you're never saved to begin with. That's like, exactly right. That's exactly what he's saying. That's a different way of getting out of eternal security. The changed life, like the Puritans. The, the Puritans said you had to show fruit in order to the fact that you know you were saved. If you're not showing fruit, then you were never saved. It's a false conversion. And that's what this young man is saying. He's saying, he says, Brian says he believes in eternal security. But it's a false eternal security because he's saying many things that uh, uh, that if you're a Christian you won't you won't do. So therefore, you were never saved in the first place. Armenians say you can lose your salvation. What Brian Dangler is saying is that you well you were never saved in the first place if you do such and such a thing. And the, the worship salvation has had the same view on that. So this is false gospel because it basically is getting people trusting in their works. Instead of trusting in their faith alone. Absolutely right. That's the Puritan system. Trusting in their words and trusting in their faith alone. In their faith alone. As they will constantly look back to their works to say, okay, am I doing enough works to prove my salvation or to show that I'm saved? Salvation by faith alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. He's absolutely right. Amen. He got it right. He's a young man. He got it right, though. It's by grace through faith. By, by grace through faith. Not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. If salvation was by works, it, it's not, not a gift anymore. Amen. You got it right. That's just how it works. So, Denlinger is a false prophet. He is a false prophet. He uh, is also a Zionist. He's, he is a, he's a racist as well. Oh, 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 oh. Zionist. Oh, boy. This is getting fun. A Zionist. I had to slip that little one in there at the end. I'm a Zionist. Yeah. And a racist. You know, I love that. Well, he's a racist. <laughs> so. I don't know what his kid is about uh, the issue of Israel. So, I mean, that's that's unfortunate they brought the issue of Zionist in. Zionist just means you're for the state of Israel existing, uh, which I am. That's the that's the independent funny mental death like for you. <laughs> and he's not even a part of any kind of church either. He's part oh, of this. See the tag he's got new IFB. Does he really? Yeah, right there, right above the. He might be an Anderson guy then. Yeah, uh, the title. Oh, yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. What a shot, Anderson zombie. Yeah, yeah, Zionist and racist. Oh man, he slipped that in there real quick. <laughs> well, he's a racist. No question about it. The idea is he believes in, uh, that if you, if a Christian believes in integration, or allows in, without allow integration, quote unquote, you can't really be a Christian. And, and before that, <clears throat> that means interracial marriage between Christians. Oh man! Yeah. He's a racist. So just yeah, so what? Mark him and avoid him. Uh, he's a false prophet, he's a Zionist, and a racist. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, that's like how he just goes at the end and says, oh, he's a Zionist and a racist, but he never gives, he never proves a point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you really proved your point there. Um, well, <laughs> Brian doesn't deny it. Brian doesn't deny it. I would take Zionist as being pro-Israel, which is fine. I go, I'm pro-Israel. So you should say, yeah, I'm a Zionist. <clears throat> but he doesn't deny being a racist. That's exactly what he is. He, he wants to redefine racism. I mean, I don't, he doesn't want to destroy other races. 
No, the idea is that there's a, there's a, a certain segregationist, we're going to put it that way. He believes the races should be separate, even though believers are now one body. There's no reason for believers to be separate racially. Tim, what was that uh, other video? It's in the... Uh... Uh, it's um, ABC Christian Fire. Is it in our uh, yeah. little thing here? Yeah, you it, it would take you forever to find it. That was days ago. You're, you'll have to go to YouTube and just type it in. Look up ABC uh, Christian 5 and it should pop right up. Okay, let me stop here. I'll deal with the, that video. So again, young man was correct most of what he said. He's obviously must be Anderson, Anderson guy when he bought the Zionist thing, which is obviously, he's, he's one of Anderson has a lot of problems himself. He has a sense of prayer at the end of his gospel presentation. So I'll stop here and put this up. This would be uh, part uh, part three, I think, of uh, the uh, Three Wolves, and um, then I'll deal, he deals with ABC, Christian Five, and see what he says about that. But the essential thing is, to keep what the young man said is absolutely right, is that the, um, a lot, we never gave any example, any show, did not show a changed life, Saul did not show a changed life, uh, it certainly went totally negative at the end, um, the idea of the gospel is faith alone. Acts 1631. Brian begins his, his uh, salvation video with Acts 1630. So is what must I do to be saved? And uh, the answer is very clear. So he, and then Brian will say, well, he made an issue. He's contrite. You know, no one says you, you, shouldn't, you can't be you're supposed to. You're not, you're not going to be conviction. So he said for false uh, a, a straw man. That somehow the free grace people are saying that you, Conviction is not necessary for salvation. We say conviction is very much necessary for salvation because salvation, you, you have to know you need a Savior. So conviction comes into play. But your conviction is the fact that you recognize you, that you are dead in your sins. And now you need you need to get be born again. You need a new life. And you find that new life in Christ. And that's all you need. The only, only thing you have to do is believe in the gospel and in the person of Jesus Christ. So you have to do the blood atonement. You, you trust in what he did for you on the cross, and you trust in him as your personal savior, and nothing else. No more condition, no conditions. No begging, no pleading, no crying. You know, all the stuff they put in there. Call upon the name of the Lord, you know, and uh, he puts that as 1013 as part of the condition of salvation. Which it is, and then 10, 10.14 says you can't call upon the name of the Lord unless you believed. So it's, it's calling up as a saved person calling upon the name of the Lord there. So I'll stop here, and uh, the young man was right, most of what he said there. And uh, they couldn't refute it, they just basically could snicker, that's all they could do. And then we'll deal with his next, uh, his next video, this next part of the video, dealing with uh, ABC5, I guess they, they laugh at this flag thing. But ABC uh, uh, Christian, I think Christian Five, that's what his name is, uh, did go to the, to the thing and show that that German flag, because the Germans have outlawed, outlawed the swastika, is is replacement for many Germans use that as in place of a neo-Nazi sign. And then you have the Confederate flag and you have that, that flag up there, so you, you, you know it gives a, a very bad uh, impression of uh, how you feel about. Uh, you know, these races. So I'll stop here and I put this up. Amen. Thank you.